do you bring a vision from the world of possibility into the world of reality? From thought all the way down into matter, from what we say in quantum physics, from the wave of possibilities all the way down into the particle, from the immaterial, something that doesn't exist yet, into the material, from the world beyond the senses to the world of the senses. How do we do that? Well, it requires then setting up goals in alignment with your purpose. So let's just say you have a purpose to go in a certain direction. Your purpose signifies a direction, but your goals should always be in alignment with your purpose. And people who have goals in alignment with their purpose, their goals are a natural side effect of them being on purpose. What do I mean by that? Let's just say you live in the United States and you were living in Los Angeles and your purpose was to go east. So you may set up the first goal to go from Los Angeles to Arizona. That's a short term goal. And if you arrived at Flagstaff, Arizona, you would know that you were on purpose. Yes? And then you said, okay, my next goal is to make it to Santa Fe. I just should say New Mexico. <laughs> <clears throat> and when if you arrive there, then you may go to Amarillo, Texas, and then of course Little Rock, Arkansas. All of these are in a direct alignment with going east, and then finally to Atlanta, Georgia. And if you kept clear on your purpose and you kept clear on your vision, then those goals would be a natural effect of you being on purpose. How many people are with me? So when you set up the goals in alignment with your vision or your purpose, and you arrive at your goal, that's how you know you're still on purpose. So then what about getting healthy? You may say, okay, I want to lower my heart rate. That's one of my goals. I want to lose, you know, 10 kilos. <clears throat> I want to have more energy. <clears throat> I want to wear a new wardrobe and have a new relationship. This is the short term goal at the beginning and the long term goal is at the end. And as long as you keep making the same choices, demonstrating the same behaviors, reproducing the same experiences, feeling the same way, you'll arrive at all of those goals. <clears throat> what about becoming abundant? You may say you want to be wealthy, and to me it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Wealth is a state of mind. You may want to start a new business. Once you start that new business, you may want to hire two new staff employees in six months. Then you may say you want to buy a company vehicle. And of course, then the next one is buy a new house. And then ultimately what? Make a million dollars? Why not? If that's your goal, to reflect your purpose, then you should arrive at it. Are you still with me? How about learning knowledge? Is there ever an end to knowledge? You may want to get an associate's degree. And then you may want to get a bachelor's degree. And then you may want to get a master's degree. You may want to get a doctorate degree. And then you may want to finally do research. But all of those things are in alignment with your purpose, is it not? So what about this, exploring space? <laughs> Could you then, man, we placed the monkey on the, in a spaceship. That was our first goal. Then we created satellites. And then we made it to the moon. And now we got technology to explore Mars, and then of course, a distant planet, and ultimately enter the galaxy. So it would look like this. We send the monkey out into space, then we create a satellite, we go to the moon, we go to Mars, and as long as our goals are along the line of our vision, we'll always arrive at our destiny. Now, I want you to understand that there is a very specific formula for excellence. And the formula requires a person who has a clear purpose. But there are two other ingredients that put this together. The first thing is called competence. You know what competence is? Somebody who does something really well. The more competent they are, 
the better they are at doing something. The third thing is called accountability. Accountability means if you say you're going to do something, you do it. And if someone asks you to do something, you do it really well. And if you combine a person who's on purpose with a high level of competence and accountability, you have excellence in an individual. I run three companies, and all three companies, my teams are very high on their purpose scale. They better align with my purpose. They have a very high level of competence, and they are very high on the accountability scale. And I don't even bother them. I never even manage them. Because if they're not competent, accountable, and on purpose, they're going to stand out with the rest of the culture, and other people are going to be doing their job, and they are not going to keep up. And I say to my staff, I run an Olympic level team. You have to be able to play at an Olympic level. If you can't be competent and accountable on purpose, there's nothing personal. We just have to cut you because we're moving at a fast pace. So now, if you look at what it takes now to maintain a healthy culture so that a group of people can work well together, it requires the same three things. A person who has a clear purpose, let's say your purpose was to change the world and my purpose was to change the world. And if you and I shared the same purpose, we would be heading in the same direction. Would you agree? And if we're headed in the same direction, that movement in the same direction begins to create what's called trust. That invisible thing called trust. And if you're competent and accountable in moving in that direction, and I'm competent and accountable and moving in the same direction, you have trust in a community. And one of the biggest problems in the United States, companies that want to become Fortune 100 companies, this is their problem. Nobody trusts anybody because they're too competitive, they're angry, they have no emotional intelligence, they don't know how to work together in teams, and because of that, they have no trust in the community, and the community and the culture can sustain itself. Are you with me still? So now, why do we lose sight of our purpose? Why do we lose sight of our vision? Why do we make the wrong choices? Why do we say we're going to do something and all of a sudden we do something else? And the number one reason is called stress. And when you see a predator in your life, like a lion or a cougar, you turn on a primitive nervous system called the fight or flight nervous system. And the moment you turn on that fight or flight nervous system, you are going to mobilize enormous amounts of energy to prepare yourself for some threat in your external environment. Now, Mexico, this is pretty adaptive. If you're being chased by a lion, you better have the energy. So when that happens, you're moved out of balance. Your pupils dilate, your salivary juices shut off, not a time to eat an enchilada. Your respiratory rate changes, your heart rate changes, and blood is sent to your extremities, and you're either going to run, fight, or hide. That's your three options. Run away, fight back, or freeze and hide. That's what people do. But what if it's not a lion? What if it's your mother-in-law? And you've had some tough experiences with your mother-in-law. Do you know that you'll react to your mother-in-law just like she was a lion? Now, what was once highly adaptive is now very maladaptive. Because as you see the coworker, as you respond to the news, as you make a judgment, as you get angry, you are turning on the same system as if you were being chased by a predator. And you are moving your brain and body out of balance. And the definition of stress is when your body moves out of balance. And all organisms in nature can tolerate short-term stress. The zebra gets chased by the lion, the zebra sees the lion, mobilizes all this energy, and now it escapes the lion. Fifteen minutes later, it goes back to grazing, and the event is over, and the body returns back to homeostasis. 
But human beings, we can turn on the stress response just by thought alone. Bills are adding up, rent is overdue, problems at work, and as you think about those problems, you turn on the stress response just by thought alone. And when you turn on the stress response and you can't turn it off, you are headed for some disease because no organism in nature can live in emergency mode for extended periods of time and expect to function healthily.